Hello and welcome to Talking Baseball. Special guest Jerry Blevins is here. We're talking relievers, athletes only today. Let's do it. Hello and welcome back to Talking Baseball live from the DraftKings studio in the Bronx, the Boogie Down Bronx. Mm. Jerry Blevins is here. We are mere feet from each other. It is nice. First time meeting in person. That's true. You're way more handsome in person. And that's setting the bar really that's, high. That's everyone's natural reaction. I was lucky to catch you on a Wednesday, <laughs> uh, so I was swagging out. Uh, King BBD in the corner. And getting nasty in Calabasie is Trevor Ploof. Trev, how are you doing on this fine, fine Wednesday? Jacob, Jerry, BBD in the chat. My people, what's going on? I heard you look like Carrie Strug. Someone put that out there on Twitter. <laughs> That's yeah, pretty like good. It. That is good. I like that a like lot. Just like if you just cut out like the face right there, you don't get to the hair. Well, you have like the outfit as well on today. <laughs> yeah, I kind of do that have is a gymnastics outfit. So that was maybe a full like- routine later. The full opening ceremonies get yes. up for Team USA in '92. We'll uh, we'll get we'll get yeah, our department on it. that. We'll put full effort into that. What's up, Trev? You know, uh, great day so far. Um, it was raining all day yesterday, so I had some cleanup this morning. You guys know how that goes. I'm getting rid of my gophers. I had like a real gopher guy come in, like a real gopher guy. So I'm. Pray for the Gophers. That's all I'm going to say. They, <laughs> they might be going bye bye. Prayers in the chat. Prayers in the chat. Yeah. Jerry, how Jerry. are you? I, I'm Flew great. in today. Oh. Today, beautiful. I did the opposite. I uh, it was rainy all day yesterday. Took the kids to the zoo in Toledo, Ohio, Ooh. for the light show. Wow. It was awesome. I've been there. It's it's a lovely museum. I have to I have to admit. Okay. We're like right between Columbus Zoo and Toledo Zoo, and we do both. But the yes. lights in Toledo were wonderful. So I'm here. Flew out of Detroit today. Happy to be here. Boogie down Bronx. We're excited. We're excited to have you here. Uh, Shea Station is rolling. You and Jolly Olive. Um, And the Mets were one of the few teams. I shouldn't say one of the few teams. There was a lot of fun teams that were having fun uh, before the lockout kind of kicked in. But especially uh, Los Mets with Scherzer. And, I mean, I guess there's still stuff to talk about because they're coming down to their final... Yeah, Final three, right? That's what Jolly and I are just waiting on. It's like it went from classic Metsy, as Metsy as it getsy, to you know, there's they don't have a GM looking for a president of baseball ops, you know, all those leaks to where people are like, man, still classic Mets, and then you know we get a GM in line, then we make huge, huge signings, and now we're about to to hire yeah. a manager. Uh, Things are looking up in uh, in Queens, so it's it's nice at least to be able to talk about it in a positive, you know, viewpoint for an organization. And man, I think when I it's already been discussed a little bit, but like when it's all actually, there could be a little thirty for thirty on like I don't want to say the Mets cornering Scherzer because you know he signed the big deal, but with the labor negotiations coming up and sure. Sher- Scherzer are standing that like Uncle Steve coming in and having the biggest wallet. Like, I think it was actually like high level stuff by the Mets. Like, I, you know, I joke around with Metsy as it gets, but like they kind of won the game. Like, they, they forced Max's hand a little bit by paying him a ton of money that he also deserves. Yeah, what? Yeah, you I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm a bitter Yankees fan. They did nothing and I'm bored. Well, it's, it's kind of like it points to how, how, different the trajectory of the organization went because Scherzer's yeah. towards the end of his career. He wants to win. And he had to go sit down with Stevie Cohen and talk about what the organization right. looks like What's because he knows his window is now small. So he wants to win more World Series, and that's what he wants to do. And so when he signed on, I mean, it, it not only is a great signing because he's – I mean, that's the best one-two punch possibly in history um, with, with DeGrom and, Scher- and Scherzer, but it also just shows you – that a guy like that can believe in an organization moving forward. It's a beautiful thing. It is. Do you think it's really that though? Like, I know there's some of that, like he's there and he knows like they're trying to win actively trying to win a world series, but like 
There's also the side where he wants to set the market. He wants to continue it moving forward. Your AAV is now $43 million for a starting pitcher. Like he, you have to take that into consideration. I think at this point, like, yeah, you're looking to win. If you're Scherzer, he's already got the ring. Like you got to get paid and be in that good situation. So it was, I think it was a little bit of both. And dude, you're in New York. You can maximize exposure if he wants that. You probably, that's probably the thing he cares least about, <laughs> I would say. Yeah, like I think his face being everywhere. It definitely played a part, you know, him being uh, one of the uh, executive board members, um, you know, at the forefront of the uh, labor negotiations. But it, uh, bottom line is, he's a competitor, and he would could have signed yeah. in Anaheim, could have signed with the Dodgers, even though they lowballed the shit out of him, mm. shockingly, mm. Um, according to Heyman. Well, but what was Heyman, what did Heyman say? I didn't it was see like that. under, uh, it was like the same kind of deal, thirty six mil a year, I think, mm. something like that. Disgusting! Um, how, yeah. how how dare Ugh. he? Yeah. Uh, but you know, I think it's I think it just shows you the that the Mets are the real deal, and it's not just a five year plan like CB Cohen talked about. But they want to do it now with yeah. with all the other signings. So sorry, you look so sad as a as a Yankee. No fan, man, though. I uh, again I'm yeah because the Yankees don't do that anymore, and they used to. Hey, there will be right there will be a fun off season at some point for the Yankees. I think so too. Um and yeah man I I honestly I I I slunked is that a word to slunk in your seat to sit no, in, no. no. um but no I was mad I I love Eddie Escobar um yes. Trev's Marcana um yeah out of the park Ace, Mark, Ace Ace Pop, and then uh Starling Marte too like I you know I've been saying Scherzer and it's like damn I like I those know, other man. guys like they. They already had a full off season, and they may do more. And I'm over here just, just uh, could, would the Yankees like Rodon? Trev, you raised your hand. Yeah, I did. I guess we have Jerry here. He's yes. all he knows everything Mets. So we have so many questions for you. We'll get to our reliever yeah. draft. Huge um, reliever draft. Big time. That's awesome. Uh, I, I had an epiphany on the show about Degrom and his contract situation. Hmm. When Scherzer goes and signs for $43 million for four years, it's clearly a sign that um, the Mets and Mr. Cohen there want to compete and win a World Series. There's no doubt about that. That is what they're saying. DeGrom has an opt-out after this year. How much money can this dude hold Uncle Stevie hostage for? I said $50 million. I, I think I'm taking it back. I think he might make $55 to $60 million a year because – he has to pay him that. You can't sign Scherzer for three years and then only have DeGrom and Scherzer for one of those three years. You cannot do that. So it's basically like blank check time, baby. Right? Like, is, am I missing something there? I, I don't think so. I think <laughs> he has to be healthy. But he is, sure. when, when DeGrom is healthy, like, I've been so sad for the COVID year and for his injuries this year, because I think as a baseball fan, first and foremost, we were robbed of watching a guy so good. Mm. He's mm -hmm. better than everyone when he's healthy. Better than Scherzer making 43. He's got three Cy Youngs. Better than anyone by a significant margin to where you're like, there's no doubt how good he is. So if he's healthy, he's older because he, you know, he was a, a college senior, you know, mm -hmm. injured early in his career. But if he's healthy and he wants to sign a four-year deal like Scherzer, maybe even three, 60's not unheard of if he's healthy. That's Yes. I know, right? It's so exciting. <laughs> Trev's been so excited about that. Ah. Like he, he had his like light bulb moment like in the casino, rounders. Is that did you ever meme that, Trev? Um, no, I tried to. I tried to. Yeah. But once he, he put that, that together, money, like, I couldn't oh, figure it out. Yeah. DeGrom can we can well, break the bank. It's like they had to have thought about that. Like, there's no way that gets by people in organizations. Like, shit, like, we want this duo, but one guy has an opt-out. We're going to pay this. And, and this guy just so happens to be the best pitcher on the fucking planet. I'm just excited to see what he gets. Because you have to push the envelope. At that point, his only goal is to push the envelope. I mean, he because he's the best and he's made – you know, considering how good he is, the least comparatively, he's like, you know, yeah. a Ronnie Acuna kind of deal, not quite Ozzy Albies, but, you know, a very team friendly considering the output that he's given him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's, he's, and they, Lindor did it to him. Lindor held out. They made this big trade. He holds all the cards 
And he said, look, I'm, I'm going to set uh, opening day. And they he held him over the barrel and it got paid. Scherzer, the same thing. And so it's positive for the Mets. It's positive for DeGrom. I think he wants to be a part of it. So it's it's super exciting. Well, uh, baseball, it's so funny. I, I keep going through these highs and lows. I call them shower thoughts of like the – that you get excited for when this lockout ends and there's going to be a frenzy of trades and free agency. It's going to be like – the coolest two weeks of baseball offseason that have ever happened. Get excited for DeGrom contract talks in a year <laughs> or less Ooh. than that. Um, and then, you know, and then you're still in the lockout and you're like, this kind of stinks. But I also just jumped to, I think Otani's a free agent in 23, 24. So, like, so if DeGrom, I know how excited you guys get as players and players. Proud Players Union's guy that as you keep pushing those limits, like if DeGrom could get a 6-0 on the board, man, by the time Shohei does it, if he's healthy, like, it starts getting into... I think he's got <laughs> crazy two oh, years. Oh, paying guys what they're worth? Yeah, exactly. What a crazy concept. It's, Holy shit. Okay. Yeah, we, we, we don't want to get too deep into that, but the, oh, the guys at the top will always make their money. It's, it's sure. the guys in the middle that they're really trying to make sure... I we've mean, we've informed worth. our audience about that. Like good, there are, yeah. the top tier guys are go- they know like they're not who this is about right now. The fact that the the qualifying offer went down is pretty indicative of of how the the system is set up. Ridiculous. Well, you see all these signings like Bryce Harper, you know, Mookie Betts, all these huge numbers, and then all of a sudden you see that it's the top twenty percent is lower. Like it just shows you how they've taken advantage of a system, and that's their right to. It's part of the CBA, yep. but. It's obviously needs some adjusting. I don't want to get too deep. I'm oh, very pro labor guy. Oh, they love it. Ah. Our, we love labor here. We are the number one labor pot in the world. <laughs> uh, and our fan base, uh, Jeff Passan came on a little while ago, whatever, friend. Uh, and we oh, were he's like, your, he's your friend. We were like, let's I'm, talk. I'm... <laughs> we were like, let's talk we'll some see. labor stuff. Uh, and he was like, wait, like, really? And we we're like, no, like, <laughs> We have real baseball fans here. They're so, like interested yeah, in that. Truth. It's not just like, oh, show me a diving catch. Um, so we'll do best diving catches of the year coming in January. <laughs> um, fellas, what happened let's, to your list you used to make? I'm sorry. I need I need those back. The scientists start list of the year. Do the start the of the year. Uh, fellas, well, let's get to the draft in a second. First, let me tell you about bespoke post. Um, we think it's bespoke, not bespoke, like I said last time. And, I mean, if we're talking about real, genuine ad reads, Jerry Blevins admitted on the way in, you are a bespoke post man. I am. I actually, every month, I've skipped uh, maybe one month this whole time, like 18 months worth of uh, boxes. Wow. Didn't know they were a sponsor. Look at actually, that. just we're quality gonna, product. We're gonna have to bring that together a little tighter. I did some uh, yeah, promo some, code, some Christmas shopping for the misses through their through their oh, app. Wow. Yeah, it's wonderful. Look at that. Um, what's the coolest thing you've gotten from Bespoke Post? Uh, personally, I am a. I just made a bar in my basement, mm. close to my office, Ooh. and they have this like smoking thing where you can like char the the wood and they have this big nice. like i think they're called like a glass cloak or something yeah and it's a full-on wow i can a couple be a old fashions fancy. in yeah, there something exactly. like that a smoked old-fashioned i uh we might have to <laughs> might have to clip out when you said basement bar me and trev both went uh? little <laughs> little dogs that's true it. yeah this dogs. Is, and we'll talk about the you said cloak a cloak i love cloaks any cloak <laughs> I'm just a fan of so glass cloak. I've never heard of. And I now think that's I, like the I big, glass cloak. the big thing that covers like a upside down vase. Yeah, like the you, Beauty and the Beast. Calabasas, they might call it a vase. Uh, upside down vase. Uh, mm, Interesting. Yes. I call it a vase, and I think people <laughs> don't like when I say that. <laughs> Jerry, I, I'm gonna second your 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 choice there because I got a package. They were nice enough to send us out some, and they sent me a mini oak barrel. That oh, I poured some some tequila that George Clooney made. Casamigos. Whoops. No free ads. Free I was ad. gonna say yeah. Free ad. My mom George's, likes it so. Yeah, I'll but I did. I, I poured the Blanco tequila in there, aged it for like two weeks, and it came out like beautifully golden and tasting excellent. It was. I was shocked. I thought this thing was a scam, and it wowed me. So that's lovely. 
Thanks, Bespoke. Well, basically what we've just told you is they have their box of awesome that you can specialize to yourself, your interests, and whatever you're into. And what do we have? We have 20% off your first monthly box when you wow. sign off. Sign up at boxofawesome.com. Remember that, boxofawesome.com. Enter code TALKING at checkout. Uh, that's boxofawesome.com. Code TALKING, 20% off your first box. And like Jerry mentioned briefly, you can not get it if you don't want it. If you want it, you get it. It's like $70 worth of stuff for $45. Uh, but if you get it with us, 20% off the first one. So thank you, Bespoke Post. What a read. There's so, so like much genuine. Every month? So much genuine shit in there. Is that what you treat it as, Jerry? Like you're, uh, you're treating yourself every month? I do. It's like something cool. That's, nice. That's like a, a lot of this stuff is very centered towards me because, it, you know, I've put in things that I like and they'll they'll sure. put it together. Uh, and then even if you don't want that box, you can like skip that one and exchange it for another one or completely skip it. And so they usually have cool stuff like kitchen knives or whatever the case may be. They have such a... Uh, Vast, wide array, wide array of boxes that you can get, and it's usually like curated. They're they're super fun, and it is exactly like that. Like I'm treating myself uh, once a month for forty five bucks, and you get some, to. some cool things that you can't get. It's nice, you know, at your store. Gotta treat yourself, man. Uh, and we're about to treat you guys. Uh, mm. We have Jerry Blevins here. H- how many year career, Jerry? Parts of thirteen seasons. Whoops. Uh, wow. 13 seasons. Old man. Uh, I think what we'll do is we, we prepare a draft for you guys. Um, we're going to do a bullpen draft 20, 2022. We're going to project a little bit. We're, we'll circle back at the end of the year. Um, and we're just going to draft some of the best of the best out of the bullpen. Um, and I was wondering how to keep track of stats. I think we'll just let the people vote by the end, or hopefully it'll have sorted itself out because... Like we know with baseball stats now, ERA or saves might not necessarily tell the whole story, but, um, you know, and we're not necessarily a strikeouts pod. Like, strikeouts are hot in the street, but if you get outs, that's what I'm about. Um, Did that rhyme a little bit? Um, Sure did. And so we always love putting some weird rules around it. Uh, We didn't get too crazy. Runs are runs, bro. Runs are runs, bro. Um, But we wanted to do, and this way I think we'll get more teams involved. You can only take... A reliever from one division. So if you drafted um, Mark Melanson from my Diamondbacks, that means you can't take anyone from the Dodgers, Giants, Padres, whoever. So um, that's kind of the draft. So me, BBD, Jerry, Trev, and then I think after the draft, maybe we'll do uh, maybe we'll do some you know jock tales. We'll circle up. We'll talk about your guys' faithful, faithful at bat, faithful. Fateful. Mm. I promise mm. you, if you pull that video up, it will not be in HD. From back, <laughs> that yeah, was old. Yeah, it's old, and it's from the Coliseum. So they're at the like top of the the Coliseum, zoomed in like eight X or whatever. It's mm. going to be pixelated, and I'm too skinny to be that pixelated. Mm. That's uh, I know that feeling. <laughs> uh, so Jerry, yes, we everyone has to write down a number. This is how we one to a hundred. Okay, we pick any number. Oh, what the fuck? Um, okay, hold on. Trev, you can like write it on your phone or something. You know, like you, you got, are separate one, from us. One to a hundred. One to a hundred. One to one hundred. Um, and then I will bring up a random number generator that I already had prepared because I'm show and I'm not typing into Google right now. Um. Oh my butt. <laughs> Trev, what uh, what number did you write down? I'll do the test spin. Oh, of course it's the test. Spin. Twenty. Obviously. Trev put twenty-four. Jerry. I got thirteen. Kobe. Thirteen. I have 68. I put 88. Okay. We're going to spin it. 33 is the number. Yes. Um, so I think, Trev, you get to pick, you get to pick your which pick. draft pick you would like. Oh, I can do like the – we're doing snake, right? Yes, yeah, snake back and forth. So if you get the four pick, you also get the five on the way back. So your call. Just thinking mm. pensive. I'll take four. Okay. I I have one guy that I want. You guys aren't going to take him. Ooh. Early strategy from Trevor Plouffe. Mm. Uh, Jerry, I think you. I'm only 20 away. 
I don't know. I'm f- I'm the furthest. So you're the okay. furthest, and you're closer. to so one I'll, high. I'll take. I'll take number one. Yeah, I like that. I like that for you. I'm not sure why I'm typing in your guy's full name into the sheet, but it felt powerful. <laughs> um, I will go three um, because it's kind of like when you're in a fantasy draft and you want to be near the weak link of the draft. Ooh, like you do not, get two in the top six. You're, and you're not worried about – I spelled my last name wrong. You're not worried about your players getting snaked. Like, that's you're true. Like, oh, that guy, so – uh, and BBD, I'm assuming. Uh, I'll I'll take the number two pick. You'll take the two pick. Um, all right, so we're doing a relievers draft. It's for next year, for 2022. We're not just like accumulating last last year's stats. Um, and it's so a little bit of who you like. You can only take one guy from each division. And Jerry Blevins, you kind of you have the honors. I know. It's I wasn't expecting. I'm so yeah. honored to go first. Um, I'm gonna stick with. My first love, which is left-handed pitchers, man. And mm. I'm going to go Josh Hader. Mm. I yeah. think his accumulation of innings and strikeouts, saves, all the above is key. And I love the flowing locks. Yeah. As close to a sure thing, man, out of the bullpen yeah. as you can get. Like, he – I remember he was having his bad year, like, what was it, like three years ago or something, and his ERA was in the fours, and then he still ended up just he dominating. Was, he was giving up so many, like, solo home <laughs> yeah. runs. It was unbelievable. But, I, you know, you average that out over a season, he'll be just fine. He'll be fine. He's a friend. Gave me the follow on Instagram. It's not a big deal. Wow. Uh, not a big well, deal. I mean, when you're How is he on IG? Outfits. Do I need to check it out? He's good. Okay. He's good. He's a chiller. I think that's a phrase the kids use. Maybe, no, not <laughs> Maybe not either. This either. isn't a kid friendly pod with this age group. We've got a healthy mix. We get a. I always say yeah, my. Yeah, you just say earmuffs, Jerry. If you're gonna say something really bad, <laughs> you still say earmuffs. My my favorite thing is there's a lot of when we go on tour or wherever we go. There's a lot of kids that run up to John Boy and they love him because he's the only cursing that their parents oh, let, let their them kids do. watch. That's like an that. amazing like accomplishment. It's an honor. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It, you, it's it comes up. Very frequently. You hear the cursing, I'm allowed to hear. I was going to say, not one time has a parent ever come up to me and be like, thank you for cursing <laughs> around my children. It's been an honor. <laughs> it's been an absolute honor. All right, so the the NL Central is out for Jerry. BBD, you have the second pick in the draft. Yeah, H- Hater would have been my selection here if you didn't That's... take him or if I had the number one pick. Um, so I think I'm going to go to another division that there's not that many names I want. I'm going to go to the AL West. Okay. I just got a new deal. I want Rysel Iglesias. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Interesting. Going to get a lot of trusty innings over there because he's kind of their best option. He's nasty. Are they ever going to be in the position for him to save? That's yet to be seen. So Saves are not the goal. Saves are out, so outdated, Trev. Huh? Wow. They're kind of well, good. I mean, still need to save baseball it's games. It's part of it. I like it's saves. part of it. Don't um, don't go all the way a, there. Don't go full that way, BBD. It's not full that way. It's important. It's all part of the equation. Early yeah. fighting. The algorithm. Um, yeah. Um, mm. Divisional value. Okay. Where am I, I going to go? You always have – you always He's think always got about a your strategy. Picks, He's, I get it. I like BBD's – the way you do these drafts. Like, I literally just mentally took a pick back because of that. Um, bad brain. Bad brain because BBD's in my head. Um <sighs> okay, I'm the third pick in the draft. Um, Rysel did get 34 saves last year. Man. Oh, God, you'd think I'd be ready. All right. I am going to... I, too, think the NL Central is a little thin. Uh, and I've got a guy I really like who I think is young and just getting better. I'm going with Giovanni Gallegos from the St. Louis Cardinals. Um Low-key gross. It looked like Luke Luke Voigt and the Yankees won a trade briefly, and now Gallegos is absolutely disgusting, and I think they trust him, and he's going to get a lot of innings out of that pen. So I'm going he's Gallegos. Gross. Doesn't Nasty get shown stuff. enough. No. Doesn't well, hey, enough. You know, we'll talk about That's it. That's what we're doing. It's the Midwest thing, man. God, the Midwest. I got Mike. to meet him at the All-Star game. That was He was a nice guy. He had his family there. Nice guy. I like that. Okay. Trev, you have back-to-back picks. Yeah, so this is the way I'm approaching this, guys, because we all know, like, I don't love pitchers. I do <laughs> I do F with relievers. I do. Because they're warriors. They're in there every day. It's every not day. like you take, you know, 
Uh, every once in a while, you're like, I need the day off today. You're off. But whatever. It's not a big deal. Um, so I am drafting, you know, being good is obviously a majority of my vote, but I also Oops. need to be in the pen with these dudes. They got to be guy guys, my boys. It really matters that that uh, cohesiveness of your pen. You know, what snacks are we going to bring? We got to all know what's going on. Like, Analytics. are we throwing baseballs to the fans? Are we playing court? Whatever. So Trev does F with relievers. Yeah. That's very, <laughs> that's very in the know. <laughs> yeah. I used to catch bullpens, Jerry. That's how bad of a <laughs> position player I was. They made me catch bullpens. So um, <clears throat> my first, this is a guy I played with. And he turned into an absolute beast. This is the AL Central we're going with. I'm taking my guy, Ryan Presley. I mean, just the stats are there. I've had a lot of fun with him. And I know, I know when a big situation comes up, like he, I know a lot of guys want the ball, but I've seen him really, really want the ball. So I think that means a lot to me. So Ryan Presley is my first pick. And I don't know if you guys want to discuss that or just, Roll right in. Double, two. double it up, and we'll we'll critique both. them in tandem. Another guy played with two-time <laughs> reliever of the year, Liam freaking Hendricks. Mm, love it. Back to back, so I got the the central and the west. Excuse me. There you go. Locked up, and again, stats speak for themselves. But I mean, what really got me on Liam was when he it was the 2020 playoffs when he had pitched like a zillion innings in a row and still was blowing like absolute fuzz, like throwing 98 past his former team. Like that was awesome. Mm. So he's got, both these guys just have huge balls essentially. Mm. Yeah. And he'll yell at you. As you know, Jerry need him. Classic Aussie guy. in Liam Hendricks yes. is a super intense having played with Balfour out in Oakland. Very intense, mm. very similar. I was in camp with the A's in 2019, had a chance to, to mingle with Liam Hendricks. That guy is like super thick. Like one of those, thick. you see his body and you're like, that guy could pitch every day at a high level. Uh, and he's shown that a lot of people were saying that he had kind of a down first year in Chicago. I disagree. I think that guy performed very well. I think he, he showed how good he could be even when luck isn't always on his side. Uh, I love that draft pick. There's no way it was going to get back to me, but g- good spin on the on the end there it's a good snag um didn't he he's just won his second rollades reliever of the year in a row i believe right i have no this idea year? yeah i don't know rivera I don't, I, yep two times sorry it's wow. the mariana rivera american league thank you of the year. thank you show well, some respect the rollades reliever of the year a little, I don't respect, I mean, it's, a little respect for the pinstripes <laughs> sorry you. about that mo my <laughs> yeah right <laughs> Um, but also, wait, one more point on these guys. Okay. I want to make them move on. Please. Both failed starters or failed starters. They were in Minnesota's system. It didn't work out as starters. And I love, I love when guys find themselves in the bullpen too. I think that's really cool. Did you, Jerry, not to open wounds, but when, when did starting pitching leave the equation? <laughs> that's actually a fun story. A little bit. I'll give it a quick brief. So I got drafted by the Cubs. I got I signed really quick, so I went out and I met the team right like the day before the season started in Boise, Idaho. And the pitching coach looks at me, he goes, pitcher, right? Uh, I was like, yeah. He goes, uh, are you a starter or a reliever? He goes, don't even worry about it. With that uh, that frame, you're never going to be able to throw 200 innings. You're in the bullpen. <laughs> Literally never thrown out of the bullpen in my whole life, uh, maybe a couple times in college. But sure. uh, they, they projected me to not handle uh, uh, an yeah, extreme innings, limings, wow. innings limit. And so I've been a reliever ever since. Saved my career, though. Kind of worked. I love it. Like, at the end of the day, yeah. I prefer it. I feel like starters have too much free time. Like like Trev talked about, I get to lace lace up my cleats every day. Kept me from doing stupid stuff, you know, Mm. young 20, 21-year-olds do. Because I knew I had to be ready every day. Um, And it, I loved it. It's fun. We get to BS out in the bullpen and talk about movies and look in the stands and then lock it in, so. I like that. The dugout's so uptight. The bullpen is awesome. Oh my god, <laughs> it's such a unique place to be. I, I would if if I would like my last year when I was in AAA rotting away. If I wasn't like playing, I wasn't gonna sit in the freaking dugout. 
Like, cause he says too stiff. I'd walk out to the bullpen, hang with the boys. Especially if your team is not doing well, like mm-hmm. being anywhere within earshot of the manager is like rolling the dice of just getting right. reamed for you're not taking this serious, man. Right. So the bullpen is the opposite of that. It's really laid back. But when the when the game started to to get into that point, everybody locks it in. Right. But for the first three four innings, you know, if like Degrom or Scherzer are pitching the first seven innings, it's very loose I and like fun. That. I feel I feel like I could be bullpen. We can vibes. do some Bino down there if mm. need be. <laughs> we, can, we can do some Bino down there. Uh, Trev Presley gets so overlooked on the Astros. He was gross last year. Two two five ERA. Um, disgusting. And Hendricks full won me over when he busted out his full like I'll pitch whenever. Like you call him the third inning, and like Liam would be like, "All right, how many we need?" Uh, so. Great picks, Trev. Great picks. I agree. Happy Thank for you. you. Presley, I wanna I wanna make a correction on what I said. He was a starter with the Red Sox minor league system. And when he came over to the twins, uh he's been in the bullpen the whole time. Mm. Thank you for correcting Sorry. that. I made the transition there. Um Oh shit, it's his birthday. Look at that. Happy uh, birthday. Hey, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thirty three years old, Presley, my guy. Oh, his career's over. Sorry. <laughs> that's mm. thirty three, that's the line. <laughs> Street <laughs> down. <laughs> um all right, that I'm was up. My peak, by Are the way. you? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I started okay. the peak in my early 30s. Mm. I like w- that. And then I hit a precipice really fast. Mm. Mm. Jake, are you ready? Oh, uh, we'll get. Day? We'll get. I'm always ready. We'll get. We're gonna just get that between sure. rounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I. Sure. Uh, all right, I'm just going with guys I like. I'm gonna stop. BBD has me thinking about strategy and stuff. Um, this dude throws arguably the best pitch in the game. Uh, so and he's mm. young and getting better. So I'm gonna take Emmanuel Class A. Um, wow! I was gonna sneak him out. Man, I just uh, throw a cutter like 102. I don't. <laughs> I don't wonderful. really get it. I don't really In get the it. mix it's for between, my next pick, Jake. Um, it's between me, him and Hendricks for me. But nice. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Are they gonna win? He enough is filthy. Games? Um. Every. I mean, the Indians. It feels like the they Guardians. always stumble into Guardians. Excuse me. We'll bleep that out. It's like the Washington football team yeah. talk. I was <laughs> that one. Whatever. Yeah. Guardians. <laughs> I'm with you. Guardians. Uh, and Class A, he's just like too good to fail. It's fun to watch too. too good to fail. Uh, BBD, what do you got? Let's see. Let's see. I let's see. I think I'm gonna go with a guy. You just every year, you know, in, in this kind of draft, relievers are such a volatile position, and this guy kind of every year. Does it? He's in a division that kind of scared me with how few guys I would have been excited to take. Um, not as much as the AL West was, but uh, I'm going to the NL West and I'm going to your snakes. He just got there too. Another guy with a new deal, Mark Melanson. Okay. Oh. Just every year. Okay. Every year. I didn't know if he was going to get snagged. Good. That guy is unbelievable at his job, and he is one of my favorite personalities I've ever had the chance to play with. He is a unique being. He is the most mm. left-handed, right-handed pitcher I've ever yeah. met in my life. He's awesome. Doesn't he own, like, a? didn't we stumble into he owns, like, a turfing company Correct. or mm. something like that? Mm-hmm. Did we, did that become a thing and then we saw it, or did we, our people find that? Or? felt like that was, like, early COVID times, and we were like, oh, Mark Melanson does <laughs> lawns. <laughs> we're like, what? Okay. He's I a man of many talents. Marks. Yeah. We'll talk to you. You ship out this way? Once your gopher guys are done, Trev. Uh, Jerry, you have the double up, so excited to see where you go with this. So I'm going to start. Let me let me just make sure I've got this right real quick. Okay. We're going to do the NL West. Okay. And I just want to, because I don't want to go too, well, I'm pulling up Sam, uh, the New York Giants. I don't want to go too, <laughs> get his name wrong, because he is one of mm-hmm. a twin. Oh, okay. Yep. So okay. I'm, I'm going to go Tyler Rogers of the San Francisco Giants. I know he's not even technically the closer out there, but the Giants with, with Andrew Bailey, former teammate, being their pitching coach, you know, mm. they do things different. They'll, they'll just roll with whoever, and that guy is funky and nasty. He's healthy. Gross. Submariners, you know, and unless their back kind of goes out, they could pitch all the time. Yeah. Uh, and I think the the NL West is a little thin, as far as you know, picking pick guys out of the out of the bullpen. Um, I love him. as far as locks go. Yeah, yeah, that's also true. 
Uh, like these guys you would, you can believe in, but so I'm gonna go to the NL East here. I'm gonna pick my guy. I'm gonna go with Edwin Diaz. Uh, I still think he is an absolutely elite arm. Um, Mets fans may disagree with me because of how many times he's blown it up and how poor his. I want what was it the 2020 season yeah. or uh, 2019 season? Um, he's just got elite stuff. It's Gross, and the NL East is not exactly full of primetime relievers. And so I think uh, Edwin Diaz fits a mold that is like old school to where he's only going to be in on saves, and he's durable enough and shown his durability to be able to, to lock some innings. He's uh, <clears throat> how good is your good when he's right? It's just like don't. Special. Don't even bring the bat. Don't even bring the bat. Uh, BBD, you always bring the bat. Um so this isn't necessarily for you, but there's a lot of people that have trouble bringing the bat sometime. Oh, baby. Sometimes you uh, you step up to the plate. Maybe it's your your loved one. Maybe it's a, a future loved one. Uh, and if your wiener doesn't work, that's not a good time. No. <laughs> it's the worst time. That's the worst time. That's the Who worst Who feels time. worse, you or your partner? Yes. We don't know. Everybody. Yes. So maybe everyone's in that situation your partner loses. probably isn't feeling anything if we were being honest. That's a great, mm, oh wow. That's a great point. So maybe you you should do it for yourself but also do it for your loved one. Uh and go hit up Roman. They will get you in conversation with a medical professional about your ED. 52% of guys ages 40 to 70. How old are you? I'm 38. Okay. On the on the precipice Whoa. on the cusp. Okay. Um <laughs> <laughs> Deal with some form of ED. Um, so what you should do is go to GetRoman.com slash talking now to speak to a U.S. licensed healthcare professional about ED and get $15 off your first month of treatment. Get your bat ready. Bring your bat to the plate. Get it going with Roman. Get it going with Roman. Trev, you have your hand up again, which <laughs> just not sure I just about. I have something to say. Please. You know how, like, People, guys, let's say guys. I know guys. I'm a guy guy. Uh, they walk around with like a, a hat that says like Bitcoin on it. Or sure. so you know that guy's in crypto. Or like they walk around with a Porsche hat on and you know he's got a Porsche. Like guys flex like that. Like why can't we rock around with Roman stuff? Like you know my dick works. <laughs> <laughs> Lord knows I'm not stopping you. That's like, true. Like, like that guy, he's ready. Hat. We'll uh we'll talk to Roman about getting some gear, some merch. Like there's no doubt in your mind that it's like it's working. Oh, that guy, that guy's wiener will work. Uh, that's <laughs> he's huge. made sure of it. Glad Trev raised his hand for that. Uh, let's get back <laughs> to the draft. Uh, Jer, kind of love your board early, but just realized I went all National League. Can here. I see a board? An L guy. Yeah. Oh yeah, I could share this with you, Trev. Put on the that? sheet. Put on the sheet. Put on the sheet. It's yeah. on the sheet. BBD. You uh you are up. Trev, you'll be getting an email in a moment with that, I think. And I'm with that going to this draft, I identified three draftable NL Central arms. Mm. And this guy is as nasty as it comes. Learned a lesson for himself last year. Gonna come back even more motivated. He's ready. Uh Devin Williams. Yep. Oh, I wanted to uh, like Easy. if I didn't get the first pick, Easy. he would have been in there, but Learned a lesson indeed. You punch a wall with your pitching hand. Yeah, Damn. that was dumb. That's pr- and he knows and that. I want to know. There's got to be more story to that, right? Because yeah. he was we think angry so. after they Something clinched. Happened. We think so. Yeah, I just want to like know. went out. out involved. I mean, the, allegedly the puzzle pieces allegedly. don't. I think, fall one, I think one day that story will be told. Redemption. I could probably get it right now. He's a, a redemption year. And I needed yeah. a young stud. He's been nothing but that. So far. how about this? None of our business. Yeah. Yeah. We'll find out when That's it's time for us to find out. Unless you're a Twins fan. I mean, mm-hmm. kind of your business. A, a Brewers fan. Uh, Brewers fan. That's right. Wrong. Yeah. Wrong. I'm out. I quit. <laughs> Wrong. I'll see you guys. Yeah, Devin Williams and his – God, it felt like he was having a met, like an okay year last year, 2-5 ERA, 87 strikeouts, 54 minutes. Crazy. Crazy. Gross. He throws like people forget how hard he throws. He throws like ninety nine, <laughs> yeah. and he's got just that screwball. Trevor Hoffman changeup. Oh, what is a uh, what is pitching ninja? 
Mm. He calls it the airbender. Airbender. Yeah, I yep. mean, it's beautiful. Sure is. Fit matches the ERA and everything for those people. Mm. I, uh, great pick. I think I'm going NL West. My heart skipped a beat for a second because this guy won me over this postseason. I think everything clicked. Um, I think he's a future star of baseball for the next decade out of the bullpen. Uh, I'm going with Camilo Doval. Mm-hmm. Um, mm, one, damn it. Just, <laughs> I thought that was sneaky too for me. Dude, like one on board. won me over big time. The talking baseball people probably remember. So when you said Giants bullpen, my heart skipped yeah. a beat. Because mm. also Rogers, obviously great pick for the same <laughs> Very different reasons, Correct. but the same reason. Um, I think Doval is, I compared K-Rod, and then I think some of the big J's took that. Whatever. Um, he's my guy. That guy. You nope. are not the first person to. I think I'm the first person. I'm just going to say. That. I think I'm the first person. And I think I brought him to your attention because um, you. JP Martinez, who is my friend and the assistant pitching coach <laughs> in San Francisco, said this is a guy guy. Yeah. And he's awesome to watch. He did have... Not a great last game, sour taste in the mouth. So he's gonna like come him. out and kill it. Just fuels Got us. Got that all off season. Fuels us athletes. Speaking of Trev, you are now the double. Um, what yeah, other what other yeah, guy guys we here. add into this pen? I, I'm just going with. I'm sticking with the East here. I'll go AL first and NL. Um, I really. Here's what I don't like. I don't like when guys come in the pen and they walk. I just don't like walks, okay? It's just, you know, I'm a position player. You stand out there. You don't want guys free on base. Uh, so I'll start with another one of my guys, another former teammate of mine, a guy who I've hung out with and wouldn't mind spending some time out there. He's been really effective for one of the best pitching teams in all of baseball, the Tampa Bay Rays. I'm going with Andrew Kittredge. Okay. Yep. As my AL East reliever. Monster year last year. Like a one eight eight. And I thought he was going to be we. And I'll tell you why, because I want to give him some love. You know, maybe he's not the best pick numbers wise, but I wanted to show him love because he was one of the guys who really struggled with the uh, when they started checking guys. Mm. His spin went down. We thought he wasn't going to be able to get back. He got back, and he was good. So like I got we we. We mentioned that, so I wanted to make sure that we shine a light on the fact that he was good, even after all that. It took him a little bit of time, which is really, when you think about it, to be expected. You pitch with stuff on your fingers, and now you have to go bare, and it's it's an adjustment period. So I'm going with Kittredge. Okay. Second pick, I will get the NL East out of the way. And I have a, a weird relationship with this guy. Um. He caused me to be DFA'd from the Philadelphia Phillies. Turns out he's like the best reliever uh, in history. Aaron Loop. I'll be getting my lefty oh, wow. off the board and taking Aaron <sighs> I Loop. Thought Don't know him personally. For- yeah, I thought people were going to forget about Aaron Loop. His zero this guy's unbelievable. Zero I didn't realize there was, a, there was a tale of the tape there. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, well, history. So yeah, I got well, I got DFA'd for Aaron Lou. I made mean, them for a long time, but I've come to appreciate his. You're gonna go out. Ability. That's a that's a hell of a player to step that's in. So he was so, yeah, the final straw. Yeah, I've never been back in the show. That's why. Wow. Okay, I I always saw you had a little chip against Loop, but now it, now it, it makes stab sense. me in the heart. So <laughs> they're gone. There is a little issue there. He did go to the Angels this off season. Yeah. He's in there. Oh wow! wow. Oh, Illegal. I had him on the Mets. Illegal. Yeah. I, 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 oh, I'm looking at his stats from last Good year. That's catch why. Okay. BBD. Gosh dang it! Wow. But I do love. I do love Looper. Wow. All right, so I have to forfeit my pick, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I think you could reap. No. Yeah. There's no. Yeah. You got to yeah, fill it's, out. It's a already roster. been okay. deleted. Yeah. We're okay oh, with man. it. Well, I was. I just. It I happens. Had it. What a powerful speech, too. I Should know. I? <laughs> Should I go James' best friend? He got you again, yeah, by I'm... the way. Yeah. Oop, Wait, got I, can't you again. I can't do that either. <laughs> <laughs> That's too. He did. He did. Aaron I think I. Luke. I think I got some stats against him though. Everyone I want, I've already taken this whole like See, one. You gave your whole thing about how BBD has strategy in these drafts, and now here you are. I have no strategy. Just peeing on the shower ceiling. Fine. You know what? I also like 
relievers to have? What's that? Earmuffs, a fucking bowling ball, and I'm taking Blake Trinan, NL West. Oh, we're all checking to make Did sure you, you haven't taken else? NL West team. Yes, it has not. I, no, Did and you sign somewhere else. Very good value at this point as well. I know the chat was a little mad He's, at me that I went Duvall over Trinan, but I like what I like. They were a little Trinan's mad about disgusting. that. They were a little mad. Man, I don't know yeah, how they watched Camilo Duvall pitch. A lot of Dodger yeah. fans. As pure stuff as it goes, like that's a battle right there. Yeah, Trinan. I don't. I when he was in, we played together in in Washington with with the Nationals, and he had struggled as a rookie. We we're. I'd watch him throw these ninety nine mile per hour, just nasty sliders. Sinkers, <laughs> and they he'd get hit. And I'm like, how how is it possible? How am I? And then I'd go out and like throw 89, <laughs> get a guy to pop up. I'm like, I don't know. Baseball's hard, man. It's a weird sport. Man. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, funky. I guess you need a little bit a little more funk. funk. A little yeah, funk. Who knows? But he figured it out. Maybe he had he too much frame. Out. He's too big. He that guy's big. another one of those. Yeah. You run into him, you're like, jeez. <laughs> He's like. You know, shoulders are like a are 66 eat? inches wide. What are you and he's like fella? one of the nicest humans. What are you um, eating, Blake? Um, okay. Trev, great job. Mm-hmm. Great job. Great picks. Um, let's see. I've done Central and NL West. Um, How many picks? Are we doing all the divisions? No, we're doing five rounds, so you will miss you a will, division. You will omit one division. Okay. You will miss a division. All right, one more pick. Yeah. Um, okay. okay, I think... This is a guy I can't quit. Um, Easy, he, I know who this he, is. You don't. Who do you think it is? No way. Just fucking pick it. You have no idea who I'm taking. Um, he was traded at the trade deadline this year. Mm. I think he's going to find himself in a lot of big spots. I am taking Diego Castillo. Oh. Of the Seattle Mariners. That's not who I thought you were. Me either. <laughs> they're Me gonna, either. They're going to be America's team this year. Um, and I've just, how good is your good? He toys with people, and uh, I think pitching in Seattle, that can even boost the stats a little bit this year. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, I'm I'm taking my guys. BBD? Interesting pick right there, I got to say. A little, I didn't know how my draft was going to turn out. This is not the team I expected, but God. I like Diego. Pure fuck. stuff standpoint, like, you know. I'm a stuff guy. Electric. electric. You're a stuff guy, yeah. I'm a stuff Eye guy. test kind of guy. Yeah. I love stuff. What are expected stats? I Close. love stuff. BBD, give us your stuff. I'm doing it. I'll take Craig Kimbrell, please. Okay. Ooh. Dirty he Craig. He was on my list, not going to lie. Dirty Craig. Liam can't do it all. The other uh, the other division I'm eyeing at the end. Yep. I don't all think right, Jerry so can we're on take, me. I'm so. in, I've got all my National League picks. So I've got <laughs> yeah, a little <laughs> sure did. I didn't realize that. It wasn't strategy, it was an accident. But we'll we'll roll with it. Mm. I'm going to go Oh gosh, one of two ways here. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna take a Yankee here, and I'm gonna go Aroldis Chapman. I just I can't see him yeah. falling off too bad. And in round four, <laughs> by the end of the year, that's, that's what gonna, I mean. And yeah. in round four, that's you know. I considered it with. with talk my last about pick. huge human beings. His shoulders, man. I don't get it. He looks like when I, I remember when he first came up with the Reds, like, oh, he's built kind of like me, like a tall, <laughs> lean guy. <laughs> And then I remember running into him uh, at Yankee Stadium. It was like him and when Batances was there, we were like crossing paths as we were going to the bullpens. Yeah. I was like, what sport? <laughs> like this guy is huge. His shoulders are enormous. And I think that Chapman is the sweatiest human being I've ever yeah. seen in my whole life. Yeah. yeah. Like, He's not sweating. Yeah. Through a hat, through your hat, Maybe. Bill, is a sweat. Like I'll wear a hat for an entire season. And not get to the bill. He does it every game. It's amazing. Yeah, he. Uh, it's a good sight to see. There's some camera shots when he'll like he'll have his jersey fully tucked in or like retuck it, and you see like the cut from his hips to his shoulders, and you're like, it looks like he's wearing shoulder pads. Got the sleeves um, underneath too all year. Literally top. like, yeah, the best he's, basketball. You can see how the sweat happened. Ever. He was like the not originator the of the ever. the plus hundred. You know, there was guys before him that did it every They're once like, in a hit while. like, and you're like, ooh. Yeah. He was the first there. guy that was like, oh, like Trev, every pitch. Trev, how do you feel about him 
never really getting a chance to be a starter because there was a talk of him going back to starter and then the, he was like, no, nah, this is this is where I'm at. I think when you can get that kind of production out of the bullpen, I don't think you think about the starting factor anymore because you still – you yeah, everyone needs starters and it's more beneficial to your team if the guy can be an electric starter rather than an electric reliever, but there's no guarantee he could have went and done that and, and stayed healthy and done all that. They found He's found his role and he's excelled. I, so like – I love it. There are certain guys, you know, I wish they would have gotten more chance, but uh, at the same time, I wish they'd convert more starters into relievers. Mm-hmm. I know, I know the starters don't want that because the payday is quite different. Um, if you can continue to rack up innings as a starter, but there are some guys you look at start as a starter and like, man, I, I think you'd uptick a little bit with all of your stuff if you can go out there and just blow it out. But they, I, 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 I have no problem with them staying as a reliever. I'm always scared of the transition from reliever to starter. Because that's a yeah. different, it's a different workout, different off season. You know, going from one to the other seems easier to go from starter to reliever. It's not easy. It's a different job. But you know, like Daniel Bard, good for him climbing back. But watching yeah. what the Red Sox transitioned him to the bullpen and into the rotation, uh, the Rangers did it to a couple of guys that kind of ended their career. Um, I can't think of their names. The Rangers. When was went this? from bullpen to a starter? I mean, Jabba Chamberlain is the Yankees bullpen example. Bullpen to the starter. Um, C.J. Wilson had success going to the yeah. to the rotation, but um, it's really tall. I think he ended up going to the the Braves, but it was like 2013, 14, 15. Chris Martin. No, um, no. Latin guy. Yeah. Two of them. Uh, oh, anyway. No, he's no, still we'll get good. research on it. Leclerc is nasty, but uh, anyway, so he's I'm going to go for my my last pick. Okay. I got to stay in the AL. I'm torn. I think you're talking about America's team and the the Mariners. I almost went, you know, my boy Paulie Seawald. He was gross last year. Oh, so nasty. good, and he really like turned it up a notch. Um, but I think I'm going to stay with the the AL West and go Lou Trevino out of Oakland. Mm-hmm. You know, kind of an established oh. guy. They're running pretty thin. They always have a good bullpen. Um, and I think he's just going to be uh, accumulate some Run stats. Yep. Okay. I like Lou, man. Yep. Nasty. I like Lou. He was the, the nastiest, most, at least for the time I was with him, um, lack of confidence where he's so good. He's like, yeah, but it, it's 99, but I got a little bit of the plate. I'm like, shut up. <laughs> just I, keep I throw, throwing it. Yeah, man. just yeah. do it. Don't let anybody, and I think he's kind of turned into that bulldog mentality. I think he's really turned the, turned the page, so I'm excited. I like it. I like it. BBD, your final pick. Man, so I'm, I'm between, I'm, I have to pick in the east. So there's, you know, parts of you that wants to go with your heart and, and go with the Yankees. I don't think I'm going to do it. So then do I go with another guy who's a little bit after my heart? I kind of I want to do it. Go with your heart. Give me Dickie B, Richard Blyer. What? Every year. Every year. Good stats. Every year. What? Last pick of the draft. This is the time to do it. Wow. Give it to me. That was a shock. I'm not going to lie. Dick Blyer? Dickie yeah. B. Okay. Every year. Wow. Every year. I love it. He's my kind of guy. Yeah. I needed a lefty. That, to really yeah. Are you sucking out. up to Jerry? <laughs> I love it. Suck up to Jerry. Suck up to Foolish. <laughs> Dickie a- B. I did not have Dick Blyer going in this draft. He was a, he was my twist him. if I wanted to have some fun. I love it. I'm happy for him. Uh, career two nine six ERA, reliable two nine five last year, year over year. Just he's gonna does give you job. your stats. Yes, he does his job. God, Dick Blyer. Last BBD. round. This is when you can do it. You, you might not want to read the comments, BBD, mm. or maybe you will. Maybe there's every year. There's a Dick Blyer crew out there. Um, okay. Uh, BBD, weirdly, okay. weirdly enough, I still have both Easts open. Yeah. And you're right. You know, there's, we obviously come from Yankee roots. There's one guy dangling there. Um, Jerry mentioned America's team right after I called Seattle America's team. And I didn't think he was talking about the same America's team. I think I'm going to round out my bullpen. I see a bullpen and I think of a, a bullpen. I think of a unit. Um, and I think I want nuts. And I think no, I want. I think I want those nuts. Don't I think, do it I think, to I think me. I want Matzik. Yeah. Um. You know, I've got a bunch That's of the most obvious. I I got a bunch of righties 
that are just gross. Give me the lefty Golly. in there too. Yeah, you know, you needed your left. I'm a little well. balanced. I know that wasn't part of the rules at all, but if I were picking a brave, hurt, Jake. it would be him. Yeah, yeah. That was that where you were going, I mean, that, Trev? Of course it was. Wow. I had a whole speech about postseason <laughs> heroism and yes. um, my. Oh. Trev's been grabbing guys oh. after his heart this whole way. Oh. What division? So you do you have the East? No, you took Kittredge. I have East. So I you have, have NL, NL East, East, NL Central. East, NL Central. Okay. Oh, I mean, man, that that hurt because I had, like I said, I had a whole thing, right? A whole thing going on there. I was going to talk about my favorite postseason pitcher ever is Madison Bumgarner. Maybe well, followed by Matt Sick. Possibly, I would have been the greatest postseason player in. Baseball history we'll never, never got the chance, so oh, we'll never know. I would like to imagine that I would have been a hero. <laughs> I mean, there's no doubt. Most people agree with that. Would've. Yeah. This is tough now, guys. Because I'm looking at the board, and it's it's to steal a NorCal slang where it's hella thin. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard hella in a while. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's got some of those. Um, You know what? Screw it. You know who was perfect in the – Postseason this year, another Braves reliever, another lefty, another lefty. Mm. He's in my book too. Sorry about it, Will Smith. I'm taking you because you showed up. You showed up and you showed out because everyone was talking shit mm -hmm. about the Braves bullpen, and they they became oh, the the night watch, the night watch right? or the night shift, the night, night shift. shift, the night shift. Matzik became night my shift boy. Came in. When he said that, the night shift, I was like, oh, I'm so jealous. I didn't think of that. How did nobody think of I that? I know. It's beautiful. I am uh, well, love it. Can can I do a 1A, 1B? What's the question we never, you're asking? We, I'm going to do Will Smith slash Peter Moylan. Okay. <laughs> okay. We'll, Just we'll because I can. Well, that we can do. We'll allow that. Yeah. Um, all right, fellas. Let's see where we landed. Great teeth. Uh, I was gonna say that smile alone. He's uh, always woo. he's always one A. Pita, uh, Jerry Blevins, Josh Hader, Tyler Rogers, Edwin Diaz, Araldis Chapman, and Lou Trevino, BBD with Rice Iglesias, Mark Melanson, Devin Williams, Dirty Craig Kimbrell, and Tick Plyer. <laughs> Babe, I love it. Me Every too. Year. Giovanni Gallegos for myself, Emmanuel Class A, Camilo Doval, Diego Castillo, and Tyler. Big Nuts, Matzik, and Trevor Plouffe, Ryan Presley, Liam Hendricks, Andrew Kittredge, Blake Trinan, and Will Smith, the official reliever draft. A lot of people are going to be mad uh, because we didn't draft blank your reliever, mm. Johnny mm -hmm. Lasagna, um, for the Yankees. Yankee fans <clears throat> will be mad at us for that. Jake McGee, Corey Kniebel, I thought he might go, but he's also going to Philadelphia, going which has been where a house break of well, a little bit. Remind people that we can only pick one from each one division. One per division. So I wanted hamstrung there I was bit. pretty close to taking my guy Pete Fairbanks because I could see him having a monster year for the Rays again. There's so many talented relievers. The Jordan Pete Fairbanks look? Yeah, he actually <laughs> hates like Jake, but Jake doesn't, Jake doesn't no, know that he No, stop that. Hates him. He likes almost all of my Instagrams. Um, <laughs> so it's just a sign of friendship nowadays. Uh, Jordan Romano, Blue Jay fans will probably be mad about that. He was that. the other choice at the end for me. Uh, I go Yankees or Romano or after my heart. So I guess leave your comments. Don't be mean. Sorry we missed your guy. Um, does Do you get pride from relief pitching being so nasty in baseball nowadays? I do. I do. I think it's, it's one of those things where – it's there's just so much talent in the game, and it was overlooked for so long mm. um, that it's nice to see some guys shine and for teams to understand just how valuable a back end. You know, it started for me in 2015 or with the Royals basically when they the had Royals, the big yep. three at the back end. Like that was when you realized they can win you ball games. Yeah. Um, yep. I actually love starting pitching as a fan of baseball. I think they need to do something to address making sure the teams have starting pitchers. You know, the in the in the playoffs, do what you got to do right. to win. win but during the play. regular season, like I'm a middle reliever and the opener is disgusting to me because I don't nobody's going to come 
wearing my jersey unless you're related to me. You know what I mean? <laughs> Nobody's you, you want to root for DeGrom, Scherzer. You want to root for these guys, the Shohei Otanis. It's, it's better for the game of baseball to have starters more important, but you just see how much talent is in the bullpen, uh, and it's lovely to watch, and, and people appreciate it. I love that. It's a beautiful bullpen. But you know, Jerry, we can wax poetic about the beauty <laughs> oh of pitching, boy. but it comes down to – Clubs want to limit the number of innings mm. the pitchers throw because you end up paying them less. I get the third sign through the order thing, but there's other ways you could do it. You could just take your starter out, whatever it is. The opener is something we need to talk about a lot, but I agree with you. That's I love silly. starting pitching. To watch, I don't like hanging with them or conversating with them at all. They're, <laughs> they're their own breed of human beings. I'd say – but they're good for the game. It's the quarterback. You know what I mean? It's the guy that yeah. takes the ball. You open up the newspaper and you say, who's playing? And it says. Who's starting today? Yeah. Yeah. It's Max important. Max Scherzer versus Garrett Cole. And you say, oh, let's the, watch that. The TBDs, the two who be determined. Yeah. Everybody's like, oh, who and cares? I, I know I was tough on some of the Braves young guys that ended, ended up starting World Series again. Dylan, I mean, he's just put in an impossible spot. Mm. Like, what, what are we doing? Let's. uh. Let's talk some more of that and some more general baseball. I love I love doing the baseball game where where your guys' paths have crossed previously. That one fateful day. Gotta love how the, baseball is. The day defense, even when it goes well for you. The day defensive it could be shifts good for the other person started. Um, and this is brought to you by Dugout Mugs. You guys know Dugout Mugs. Oh, we love Dugout Mugs. You heard the noise Trev made. Um, Dugout mugs. Make the noise, Trev. I know you always you always do it for Rosie. You never do it for oh, us. Oh, this one? Pop that. Oh. It's incredible. Wow. God, it's incredible. It's what a noise. Wow. Bottle that. That was the knob shot. Uh, go grab a bunch of knob shots and throw it in everyone's stocking. Boom. Um, you know, <laughs> the, the ho- best stocking holidays, holidays can get, you know, sometimes you got the family member. You don't see eye to eye, whatever it is. Fill up a couple knob shots. That's going to solve your problems. Might make them worse. That'll solve your problems. Go get some knob shots. Go get the metal mug. You've seen me rocking that one. We've got the Cubs one floating around, Yankees one. Um, you probably know them from their traditional wood ones. BBD's got the Cubs one over there. Nice. Uh, go to Dugout Mugs. Use code JOMBOY at DugoutMugs.com. 30% off site-wide uh, before they sell out. I love that. Peacock in a little bit. We will sell out. Go get yours. Mm. Dugoutmugs.com, code JOMBOY. Everything 30% off. Um, nice deal. Great. So where, where do we want to go, boys? Do we want to start with the faithful at bat? Um, oh, my gosh. I no, think he, this is I mean, pro both of about. us, though. I, There's not much to talk about. Trev, I mean, in a way, you win, but you you lost. No, I but don't. you won. No, I don't. No, it's, I it's, don't. I don't even think I hit the ball that hard, guys, honestly. I, so, I watched the video when it got sent to me, but. It just is. Jerry was nasty. 2013, we, I wasn't very good that year. I, I was coming I was. into my own in 12-13. Those are the years. Those are the... So that's that's kind of what I want to ask you, Jerry. Like, So, you know, you A, hilarious, you're starter, starter, reliever. <laughs> uh, slide of frame, you're going you're gonna to be reliever. That's right. And you just mentioned it starts to click for you. I mean, you know, you have your first, like, full rookie season, you have a... 311 ERA, 2008 with Oakland, um, and then you just say, you know, 2013, you're starting to find yourself. Is that just, I don't want to say a coming of age tale, but like, what? no, kind of. It's so baseball's so different than other sports where you come out of college and you're so athletic that you're going to play. Sometimes the game's a little bit fast, like in basketball, you can guys contribute right away. But it's so rare for baseball because you have to accumulate experience. And for me, luckily, I came up in Oakland where the team wasn't very good when I first got there in 07. Mm. And so I was able to, to learn and see what it takes to be a big leaguer, you know, wear my lumps out there and get kicked around a little bit because, you know, when I, when I was with the Mets, guys are contending, the young guys come up, and they have to be really good because we're trying to win a World Series. And so they don't get their chance to get their feet wet first. And so when I was with Oakland, 
I accumulated a bunch of experience between going back and forth, mm. um, just being a part of it for a long haul. And eventually, like in going into the 2012 season was m- the first time where I felt really confident in who I was as a pitcher and as a as an adult. Mm. You know, it was yeah. like I was out of options and I knew this is the time where I'm either going to be good enough to be in the big leagues or I'm not because they, they can't just push me down into triple a because they they want to or they're manipulating my service time which happened the year before because i had a good year in 11 a sub three i think and i was back and forth a ton but it's just how it goes and so i was finally comfortable and knew i could either be a big league if i were good enough and if i wasn't i would be in triple a and so that's where i was in 12 and then 13 is when we faced each other and that was my last two years in oakland before i got traded over but that was it man Mm. It's it's beautiful. <laughs> it's beautiful. Trev, thoughts? I mean, look, it's we know how short average careers are, and it's a couple different things. It's money thing. It's the ways tim- teams, you know, value those roster spots, and when you start making a little bit, they can ax you for someone that maybe is a little bit worse than you, but they don't really care about it. So to be able to play as long as Jerry did is just a testament to a couple things: work that you put in, you have to be a good person. I don't care what you say. If you're a shitty person, then you have to be like extremely, extremely good. And that's how you stick around. But if you're good, which Jerry was, uh, I don't think you take offense to me saying you're good, right? No, no, not at all. Okay. (laughs) Good Uh, person works hard. Yeah. And like, you know, that's how, that's how you stick around. Guys have to want to be around you. You have to offer something to the team Besides your stats, you have to be able to mentor mentor guys, you know, teach people how to be professionals. We talk about that all the time on this. The value of veteranship is undervalued right now. And I think teams are kind of seeing that when you look at the Giants and and what they've been able to do. Even if you're a veteran, yeah, it's about uh, helping the young guys out. But I also believe veterans can take some of the information and make quicker adjustments than a young guy can. Because, because to get to be a veteran, you've already had to make a bunch of little small adjustments as the game adjusts to you. So, you know, I, I just think anyone that's put has played as long as Jerry has is, you know, you have to just applaud them because it takes a lot more than just skill. Yeah, man. The, uh, thank you, by the way. That Are you a good nice. guy? I when, think I was am. The last I try charity to be. You donated to? The last charity? What was the last uh, charity you donated? Ooh. Probably. So my neighbor, I golfed in their Sounds golf like outing, lot. who's called the, the Black Swamp. Okay. Uh, memorial. Uh, he had child. His one of his kids had cancer, and so we did a big charity event for that. All right, you're a nice guy. Uh, but you know, mentorship is you know they can't quantify veterans anymore. They don't know how to appreciate what it means to have been there before. Uh, and I think like the Giants as an organization understand things a little bit deeper. Um, I really love what they have going over there. Like, it's incredible. I was there in spring of 2020 before. Um, COVID hit. Ooh, really? Yeah, I, I was there in, in spring well, training. Um, Farhan Zahidi, who's their their president, um, came up with me in Oakland, and then he went. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, and so we had a, a little bit of a connection. Trev's um, a big Gabe guy. I love Gabe. I, I yes. you know, I was in watching him when he was in Philly kind of learn and gain experience. Been, having been there in spring training of 2020, I gained so much more respect for him, not only as a just a quality human being, but he's the way he has interactions with his players, the true relationships that he has. He cares about the players as an individual, and so these guys are going to work harder for him than they would for themselves. And so it's it's a true organization. So I think they're building – magic out there and you talked about veterans veterans go over there and excel guys like longoria mm-hmm. you know they see something that can even make you even better and you're willing to open up to that and so you know a guy like me the, my two best abilities were availability because i knew i was mm. going to be ready to to play every day i did everything i could and reliability you knew what you're going to get from me i was never you know blow nine saves in a row where you I was going to be my peak. Sometimes I'm going to get beat. MLB hitters are awesome. Sometimes I'm going to give up a Bryce Harper home run right. or a Freddie Freeman, you know, gapper to win the game. But I'm going to execute for the most part. Uh, and that was that was kind of the longevity of my career was just you knew what you were going to get out of me. And as a bullpen guy, being reliable is, is key. Mm. It's hot. 
It's hot. Um, <laughs> it yeah, I want to. So, a, I want to do some personal and silly stuff mm. with you because I think that's fun. Um, I'm, I'm saying I'm gonna hype up a competitor, but they're kind of the kings of the world. Uh, listen to part of my take interview. They had Joey Harrington on, which speaks to probably. I was gonna say of, there's only a few podcasts. Yeah, you're no, talk they're about <laughs> they're like the guys. That. I'll give it to them. Uh, okay. Joey Harrington, which you know. Uh, if people don't remember, like, he was a big deal, like, Oregon, cover of the football game, blah, 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 everything. And he was telling some of his stories today and tying it to what you were just saying. And we talked about the Giants a lot because of Gabe and all the veterans. That's the part they just missed over the, the recent analytics wave, which we always say we love analytics. I mean, there's so much good in it. But, you know, I think for the past decade or so, they've seen a one-war player as a one-war player. So if you can get that out of your fourth outfielder who's 25 years old and plays good defense, they view that the same as your, you know, 32-year-old that, you know, slaps it around and doesn't play as good defense, and it's all just numbers into the computer and go. And Joey Harrington was telling some stories. Bobby Petrino now, who's, uh, again, go Google him for some stories, but he was the head coach of the Falcons. Joey Harrington was there when Mike Vick got caught in the dogfighting scandal, and it's just all these moving parts. Whoa. And he said it was obviously chaos, but he said there were so many veterans in the locker room that it was actually, and he listed all these guys that, you know, NFL moves fast and you forget a lot of guys, but it was like Lawyer Malloy. Like, he was, he lists a laundry list of guys you're like, work done. You're like, yeah. And he's like, you know, that was huge. Like, and me being the quarterback subbing in for Vick, they were like, hey, you got to talk to Bobby because everything, and it's just – a whole dynamic that I think sports have gone away from that. You know, baseball, I think why we fought the shift a little bit is because, and Jimmy Jimmy was on this pretty early, is that baseball hasn't adjusted this shift. Like, baseball adjusts, and I think we're going to see the veteran thing between this new CBA, what the Giants did last year. Like, I think veterans are going to become trendy. The whole Braves outfield last year that they traded for, uh, I think veterans are going to become the new trend, and I think that's really good for the sport in general. Um, so uh, I'm excited to see that uh, once once we get baseball and all of that. But, yeah, the locker room, man, uh, I mean, you guys can obviously speak to it a lot more than me, but that, that changes so much within a team, so much. That's like one of the th- – like the fact that Freddie Freeman hasn't signed back with the Braves yet, It may, it's – gross to me like it makes me <laughs> sour inside because he is that locker right. room organizational decisions funnel through freddie freeman they'll yeah. go to him and be like what do you think about this or practicing on this off day flying out this time he is a part of the soul of that organization and to let him dangle be a little there, bit yeah. dangle it makes me sad and i the Dodgers and the Yankees. He, he lurking, would be an like. unbelievable Yankee, by the way. That would be an amazing fit, but it would be bad for baseball because he needs to be a brave. Uh, it could be good for baseball, right? Ah, I don't think <laughs> no, so. you're, it just you're, shows you're you absolutely right. That lack Freddie of Freeman. loyalty and appreciation for what he brings. You know, Ronnie Acuna is amazing. He's the most skilled player on that team, right. but but he's not the face of the franchise for a reason. He's, he's not there young. yet. He's young. We were in, in 2019 playing with those guys. I would go out of my way to try to have a conversation with, like, he's 19 or 20 at the <laughs> yeah. time. I'm like, dude, what are you into? What's, like, what do you – I don't I don't even speak your language. It's so fun. Not only, you know, English as right, a second but language, as... but, like, the stuff that he's into, the, the, the slang that he uses, it's so funny. But he's just not ready to be he's that tw- guy yet. He's 23 now. Yeah, it's insane. That's insane. And so insane. Freddie Freeman 23. is the gel. Not only is he MVP from 2020, just carried your team to an organization, the fan base, that's who you think of. It, it was Chipper Jones, and now yeah. it's Freddie Freeman. Appreciate him. Not You're like, well, that last year of your contract <laughs> that you want, you're not going to be as good, but that's what you do yeah. for a guy that is the Atlanta Braves. So that's how I feel. It's it's disrespectful to me that he's not a already signed. All I know is I agree with you. With as far as Freeman, he's out in California right now, living it up. I followed him on Instagram. He had <laughs> fake snow brought out to a beach house. I mean, the guy. Don't let the Dodgers come in and say, "Hey, Freddie, want to come home?" Mm. 
You want to come live at home, bro? Like, bring bring your family. Come live at home again. Do you want to make some Dodgers little league games thinking. for your kid that's growing up? Do you want to do you want to be able to do that? Yeah. yeah. Don't, don't you want your kids to be city tough and you know <laughs> see some sewer rats and you know really we don't, have, we don't really no live lives in the city in L.A., bro. Okay. Uh, uh, he's talking. Trev, we're talking. He's talking Bronx. We're talking right city, around the corner bro. here. We're talking. Nobody. Oh, that's disgusting. <laughs> I love, I love the Bronx. You love, the Bronx. you know, the streets of New York and I get, uh, get along very, very well, especially when it's past two a.m. Mm. And that's Jerry. Now we're talking about the real stuff. What that's does, when it thrives. What do you do after two a.m.? Everything. Any if you're in the city, anything. Okay. Get a great slice. Mm. I like that. Uh, you can sit down at a freaking Michelin starred restaurant. That's like, ah, oh, we're just gonna stay open till four. <laughs> like it's beautiful. Um, I love New York. I love. The city we we bounced around Manhattan for our four years living here, trying out new neighborhoods. When when you're a visitor, when you come in to play the Yankees or the Mets, they put you in like Midtown, right? Midtown, and I yeah. didn't like New York that much um, because it was just chaos. You but, were just there, yeah. Yeah, and so you're like, man, there's just too many people. Like aggressive Elmo trying to like <laughs> rob me, and stab me. Who knows? Fake ass Elmo. Yeah, and so it, it's yeah. gross there. But we we got traded. To the from the Nationals to the Mets, and my wife was like, "Let's let's live in Manhattan." I'm like, "Man, it's tough, babe." Yeah, and so we ended up living in Chelsea our first year, and loved it. Yeah, it was unbelievable. It's like a real neighborhood. There's and then we lived in um, Gramercy Park, Lower East Side, Upper East Side. We tried all the. Di- uh, it's just a people are amazing. A city that you could walk anywhere. The best of the best is at your fingertips. Anything you want, it's it's awesome, and the people appreciate things on a different level like the fandom here is just it's just different to be on a team in New York that when you're good and they appreciate you like the it's just awesome it's Pe- wonderful people place. are just turned up to 10 like That's look at it. look at MSG last night with Steph Curry like that I wanted to be there electric it was yeah. electric I did too and then I saw to get in the house it was six bills I was like you know I'll, <laughs> was I'll get really? ready oh. I'll get ready for the show tomorrow um but yeah, man, and that dude, I was kind of the same way. Like I grew up in Connecticut, and like I'd come to the city or come to the Bronx, and then we're moving here, we're starting this whole thing, and like I live in the Upper East Side, and it's like a, a town. Like it's in mm-hmm. the city, but like you know, you walk around and the dogs there and everything. The, um, the store owners are like, oh yeah, hey, what's up, Jake? Yeah, yeah, they start to see regular. You get like a neighborhood. Your bodega is like every. It's awesome. So Freddie, so cool. Ooh, bodega. Freddie would love it here too. You're listening, Freddie. Um, who are who are your guys? Like I um, you know, I Trev's best friends with everyone in the league. Blah blah blah. Um, I always I always laugh because I'm such a baseball nerd that like you know Peter Moylan will be golfing with Chris Medlin and I'll be like, oh, Chris <laughs> Medlin. Like I I know that. Who are your who are your so, guys from from playing? So uh, guy guy Craig guys. Craig Stammen, who is okay. a reliever with the Padres. I went to college. We went to University of Dayton together. Oh, Flyers. Two, okay. Yeah, we're two, we played two years together in college and then ended up playing together in Washington. Uh, just a fantastic human being. I like to be around him. Uh, Ross Detweiler. Um, okay. Tyler Clippard. Yeah. Um, high change-ups. High change-ups. High change-ups. Yeah, the two-time Yankee. Yeah. Um, I just I, – I love – Relievers, you, you're a different group. Um, there's some guys that I'm I'm really close to. His name's Walt Nolan. Uh, he works out in the West Coast. We played a ball together. My buddy Jesse Estrada plays, still plays in Mexico. Okay, you're just a it's a family type. I don't have like big celebrity, big name guys. Um, I actually I just had COVID. I miss my boy Conforto's wedding. Mm. You know, my wife and my son was in it. He's gonna you know. Be the ring bearer, wow. so it was, it was tough. Damn. That was tough, but you know, I don't have. I'm not gonna go. You know, fly a private out to to watch a Monday night football game, mm. or you know, I don't have those kinds of friends. I just have friends. <laughs> I leave for a second. <laughs> oh no! Oh, I oh, didn't see you. I didn't see you there. We thought you were still gone. No. And by the way, again, this is this is talking baseball. Craig Craig Stam and Ross Detweiler. Those are those these are, guys are my boys. They're you know. We came together. We have kids the same age. Um, our wives get along great. Yeah, he's a Midwesterner. He's a St. Louis guy. Uh, just good people, man. Where they're a different breed. I love Josh Donaldson's one of my 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 good buddies. Okay. I was waiting for the position player. <laughs> yeah, to I love strictly a reliever. Thing. I love Donaldson. He's 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 a good friend of mine, dude. That guy is a human being uh, beyond the likes of 
uh, a regular person like me. That guy just lives right. on a different realm. Mm-hmm. And there, if you're on the mound, you don't matter to him. No, no. If you pitch, if you're Donaldson on the mound, doesn't respect. Yes. What you do? <laughs> he <laughs> thinks it's the, he literally production. thinks it's the easiest thing to do is pitch, which well, is amazing. Jerry, he's yeah. got a good point. Oh, I his agree. Favorite saying <laughs> is. If hitting is the hardest thing to do in sports, what does that make pitching? And you can't be like, oh, well. Such a good And so I asked him. I asked him if he were pitching. So this was my rebuttal to to that line. I remember this. We had this discussion. Yeah, I was like, so if you were pitching against yourself hitting, do you get yourself out? And he says, no. I go, so it's not the easiest thing to do. Mm. See, the pitcher's thing, man. No, no, because Josh is – thinks I'm so good of a hitter. It doesn't <laughs> matter if you're the best pitcher. Oh, I'm still going to hit you. Donaldson, a uh, former catcher, turned back right. to third base. He made his debut in Oakland. We came up together there. Um, he oh, is, hey, let me, t- let me ask you something. Mm-hmm. Because I only heard stories about you played with JD. I did. When he was first coming up, right? Mm-hmm. So I was there in 17. I heard stories about him. Obviously played mm-hmm. against him and whatnot. But the one story I always – I think we've told it on this, this pod before was about uh, him and Billy Bean's relationship. Contentious, to say the least. Yes. Were you there in the clubhouse <laughs> after the game when he was telling Billy, like, pay up? Before the game, he said, pay up, Billy, and then he hit, like, a walk-off or a game-winning hit, <laughs> and then he said price went up, something like that, right? Uh, I, I was there, yes. I did see <laughs> their, their interactions. Josh Donaldson – knows how good he is and he always have even when he wasn't that good yet he knew he yes. was like i'm it's i'm it's inevitable <laughs> that i will be an mvp awesome. and so at a, at an early age he just knew and and billy is in the clubhouse a lot more than other gms especially at that time a lot and you're gonna run into high energy guys like right. that, that that you're gonna have, well they're both like that kind of yeah yeah billy is very similar commands a presence but donaldson is billy loud likes billy <laughs> donaldson is loud well billy understands his value and what he brings but he doesn't like when donaldson's in a room you know it from two rooms away <laughs> and so when you walk in you're like all right there's this is something's gonna happen exciting like and he speaks his mind and he speaks what he thinks is the truth at all points and i respect somebody that's genuinely himself uh, you get around a lot of people that are fake or that love to gossip, and when you're in a clubhouse for ten months straight with people, when you're when you're that close to somebody all the time, you would I will I'll take you know Josh Donaldson over somebody that's fake nice all the time. Sure. That guy not only is he sure. amazing at his sport, but he's just a good person. And now he's gonna ha- he's got dad strength now, so he's mm. he's on a next mm. level. Mm. He sneaky had a good like uh, stint in Minnesota. Like mm-hmm. he paid him a lot, and he, he was hurt a little bit, so it kind of gets overlooked. They've also been a bad team, but like his overall numbers are excellent. He produces, man. He knows. He's he, he was. How about? <laughs> he he just knows. By the way, he's had calf injuries. He's got, you know, we got some calves here in in, oh. in Jake, but Donaldson's calves, and they're always hurt. I'm like, dude, just do what I do. I I don't have any calves, so I can't pull them. <laughs> You ha- yours are too big. They're vulnerable. They're easy to That's easy hilarious. to mess up. I feel that related. Look, gr- look great in a pair of baseball pants, though. But where we land almost every episode is comparing myself and Josh Donaldson. <laughs> um, Pretty by the way, much. literally MVP in the bag, like forty four career WAR. Like he's. One I could of, talk about Josh Donaldson a lot. He's, he's a, hilarious. He's a monster. A monster. Forty one homers, one hundred twenty three. Not realized. like he plays defense. As a as a pitcher, like I love guys mm. that play defense like him because if if there's an outfield assist coming into third base, no matter when the ball is going to get there, that guy is not going to touch third base. He will put his body <laughs> down in front of the bag. The guy will slide right into his legs, and then the ball will get there and he'll tag him out. Like he is that kind of like I'm getting your face. This is I'm I'm going to get dirty. He's unbelievable. His defense alone has been overlooked for for a long time. Um, he covered a lot of ground for me out in the Coliseum. Mm. Uh, and he went from catcher to third base, and, and immediately, as soon as he switched over, he was immediately the player that he is today. Like, unbelievable. Catchers, take, it takes so much out of you to call a game, to squat down. We were talking about it off <laughs> yeah. the air, uh, how, like, these guys. These are nuts. Yeah. You you said uh, you didn't want to use the word? No. You want me to? No. I 
Like our, use our, the word. Are catchers insane? What word did I use? It started with an S. Oh, or no, no, a D. I would never, D. I would never use that. Word. They're a D? I mean, like a, they're a little dumb. Like, but not. Like because your, no, 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 no. I would never put it on record but, that no. Jake Scoriali <laughs> said catchers are dumb. Only because of they know the punishment they're giving themselves by foul tips, by wearing all that. Like it's just you know you know going in like I'm going to the get career hurt today. You signed up for compared to all of your Correct. other teammates. Yes. Third base, no it's thanks. Massively the, different. the two the two positions I would never play. I'm left handed, so I can't. Right. Third base and catcher. I couldn't do it. I couldn't be like, hey, uh, I'm gonna squat down and your bat's gonna hit me in the hand one out of a hundred times. <laughs> I'm gonna take a foul tip. Like I couldn't commit to it. I because I'm too And like, dude, you we could say all the stuff, the bad stuff that happens to catchers and like hit in the hand by a bat would be not item nineteen. Luffy, I'm gonna <laughs> I fouled off a ball. I had four at bats in my whole career. I fouled a ball off my shin, hmm. and hmm. I almost retired on the spot. <laughs> and you guys don't even you guys don't even like look at it. You like step out of the box, and I, I in my head I'm like, dude, that hurts so bad. And the fact that you aren't like rubbing it, you're just like, oh god. Hmm. Oh, all right, That's, I you can know, feel my leg now. It's crazy. You guys it's are just nuts. part of. It's part of being a hitter is understand you're going to hit with the ball, whether it's by yourself on a foul ball or by the pitchers. And I and you know I think if more pitchers hit, which is never going to happen again, they right, stop D. wasting that pitch inside so much because they understand like, oh shit, that could do some real damage. Um, but yeah, it's I don't know, man. It just happens over and over again. And even if you have a shin guard on, you, you never, never hit it. It's like very rare that you actually wherever you put your ankle guard, you're going to miss it's it. Not happening. And how about a little, you know that, Jake. a little third base respect at the end? Jerry says he it's never would do that, and Trevor Plouffe stood over there nobly. I'm, I'm at, at on the pitcher's mound. We're closer, sixty feet six inches, but I know that area very well. Mm. I, I mean, I spent 2015 on the DL. I got hit by a line drive. Got hardware in here, but it's different. You guys are there. Standing in front. It's called the hot corner for a reason, for man. No thanks. Mm. You got Jose Bautista mm. up, yanking the ball down the <laughs> yeah. line. Like, I wouldn't even want to be the team third was base a coach. <laughs> yeah, that's that true. That team was a big, big mm. problem. It was it, an Encarnacion, Bautista, turf? Donaldson. Like, turf. The, the turf field. Like, oh. Enough about how good I was. I don't want to <laughs> I think it's I think awesome it's awesome. And I then was. we were talking about foul tips, but then you're doing that all the time to yourself as a catcher on purpose. Like, you got there's something loose. They're hockey players that love pain. Yeah, they they're are like, hockey players. They make themselves go through that on purpose as like a rite of, rite of passage. And as they're the older brothers of the team. That's what I always say. They're also geniuses. The older bros. A lot of people, that's their path. Whether, mm -hmm. you know, Donaldson, Kiner Falefa, um, or you just have a 15 year career and enjoy it. Drew Bue, our guy. Um, shout out. JP Crawford, shout out to him. Crawford. Crawford. Yes. JP Crawford. All right, we got to wrap it up. Uh, oh. This was awesome. Jerry Blevins, lady, how? ladies and gentlemen. Do we know how we're going to do this at the end? The, the, the draft? draft? Oh, we'll post it okay. and we'll get some stats in a little bit and like go follow Shea Station with Jerry Blevins and Jolly Olive. Shout out, Jolly. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you ma Mon What day is it? We'll see you Monday. John Boy will be back. Trev will be <laughs> Trev will be medicated properly. <laughs>